Paddy Stapledon were here in Semple Stadium. The full-time score was Cork 3.30 to Tipperary 1.24. Not the best day as a Tipperary man. How would you sum up the game? No, not the best day for Tipperary men in the, in, in, in the attendance here, but great day for Cork, I suppose you'd have to say. Um, probably first time since last year they put two really, really good performances together that they'd be very happy with going forward. But um, I think if you're looking at it, Tipperary whirlwind start 1-3 to no score up. Um, and they were on fire really but Cork, Cork did eke their way back into the game but but we saw I think it was on 10 minutes Tipperary got a penalty um, and that penalty was to put them 7 points up it hit the post actually we heard after we thought it was it was a save by Patrick Collins but it hit the post and straight up and it would be bad enough if score, Cork scored a point after that you know a hammer blow but they got the goal and they got themselves back to a point uh, a point down and, and after that they shoved on I think they went Two, two, six, or seven to three points after that uh, for large periods of the first half, and going in at half time, uh, eight points down. And Cork were in complete control. I think we could see that it wasn't that it was Tip or that unlucky to be behind. Apart from that, that that post maybe. Uh, apart from that, Cork it was all played in their terms, aggression, uh, speed, hurling, everything. You know they were they were, they were brilliant after that. And as you said, Tipperary had the fastest start. You know they were five, six points up at one stage. Do you think if that penalty went in, No McGrath, as you said, came off the post so unlucky, if that went in, would things have been different here today? I do think it can change it. Now, after that, what we saw, it would be hard to believe it could change it because Cork looked on such a different level to, to Tipperary. But I do think things like that can change the match. It allows Tipperary maybe to sit back, gives them a bit, bit more belief, gives them something to hang on to. Uh, but after that... It, it was just so difficult. Um, it, it was like a wave. We saw it. And I saw this earlier in the year. I was with yourselves down in Walsh Park against uh, Waterford. Again, a good start. But Waterford got a goal and it was just a wave came at him. And Tipperary really have struggled probably over the last couple of years to stop that. So, uh, no, I think Cork were absolutely full value. Uh, it might have changed it, but uh, that's history now, I suppose. And what was the difference between the two sides? For me, looking on, it was the pace. Cork's pace was immense and Tipperary just couldn't seem to, to grasp that, couldn't keep up with that. No, they couldn't. And I suppose, look, the way I was looking at it, you, you can look at it in two ways. One is from a, a, a game game, uh, game plan perspective. Tipperary didn't play too many guys in their full forward line. Mark Hill was there in his own lot. And then you would feel like you'd have a lot of bodies out the pitch to, to clog things up. But it, to us up in the gantry, it didn't look like that. And Cork were, you know, too many times we were able to get through uh, the tip middle of the field, middle of third, uh, unopposed really a lot of the time and I suppose for Dara Fitzgibbon's goal, uh, shades of Kyle Hayes last year in the Munster final running through uh, with Dan McCormack unfortunately again having to, having to trail him and nobody coming to meet him, you know, and that's that's criminal stuff and if you see the big teams at the minute, the Clares, the Limericks, uh, the Galways even last night, there's always men filtering back and Tip just don't have that at the minute and you know it is a concern and a lot of young players out there but uh, Cork t- took full advantage really today with their style of play. Dara Fitzgibbon, you had mentioned him there in midfield. I thought he was absolutely brilliant. And that goal, I think it was like 40 yards out. He soloed through. But as you said, no one was coming near him. And he just hit it low and hard. He, he hit it so well because it just slipped under and slid through then. Slipped through Barry. And I think what often happens, goalkeepers, I think it was, was it Ronan Matter was coming out to maybe close the space in one of the cornerbacks. And he hit it just past him. And I think when it just goes past the player uh, and, it, and it, the keeper sees it late, it can go anywhere in past them. Um, so that was a great goal. But I suppose when you're talking about Darrell Fitzgibbon you're talking about one of the most athletic players in Ireland and the number one thing most other teams do is make sure they have a guy man marking him at all times and while while he didn't get those runs every time all, all it takes is one for him and he busts open the defence we saw it the second half again probably the next time he got really let loose and he set up the unbelievable goal for Tim O'Mahony like what a, what a flick uh, home he, he gave it so yeah Darrell Fitzgibbon very very important player for them going forward and Tipperary, their style of play, do you think they, they got their set up right here today? Just in that first half especially, I was looking inside and it was a one-man full forward line and it didn't seem to be looking like it was working for them to their advantage anyway. You know, it was constantly being just cleaned up and back out the field. What did you make of the way they set up? Yeah, I thought early on it looked, it looked good uh, because I think tip players looked like they were very energetic around the field. They were able to close down the Cork guys. Um, and then Mark Yo, obviously popped the ball in for a goal for, for, for Morris um, and won the penalty so it looked like it was working well but it felt then 
that tip weren't able to breach him around the middle and get the good ball in so I felt like they were maybe hovering too many balls high in. and then Cork Jai started to slip back into that role and he cleaned an awful lot of a ball up in the number six position so I think we didn't adjust very well if you were talking about uh, from a uh, Tipperary perspective um, and just in game play in general I thought we were a bit dis- disjointed really um, sharp puck outs are nearly for the sake of it and, and there isn't a lot of fluidity in terms of where the ball goes at the next stage and getting ball into the forward line too often for me Marco had to run maybe 40 yards left 40 yards right or 30 yards left 30 yards right and he's out at the sideline then trying to round his man and as we saw because Tiff are playing so many uh, players out the field there was very little support inside so again I think that, that leads back into the whole uh, point of it, it going on Cork's terms they had so many men back there which we wouldn't you know I would have uh, criticised Cork for in the last few months not having enough men back not being defensive minded enough but today you know Tip still had a couple of goal chances but they were a lot more kind of watertight than they had been before and for Cork, it looked like the, it, things were clicking. They were finding their rhythm. I have to mention Conor Lahan, eight points, absolutely immense. Like, what a player he is and some of those scores. Yeah, brilliant. And it's 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 a brilliant story for Conor Lahan because last year, I think he was off, he was off the Cork panel, uh, but still the best club player in Cork uh, at that level. And I think there was big groundswell in Cork for him to be brought in brought back in maybe he could make the difference and he was brilliant today um, I think Tibble probably disappointed with a couple of elements that he was he was kind of on his own for a few of the strikes but he had to get himself in that position and I think Tip found it hard to get near him all day even in our back line uh, that you know the, the tough touch tightness like that's one thing if, if a forward wins the ball but you know you always want the back man that's hanging off him when they do win it and I don't think it happened enough but Conor Lahan was brilliant um, and in fairness uh, Kingston did really really well in the corner scored four points as the game went on and that is, as it opened up uh, Cork even just looked like they were going to be able to tear Tipperary apart more and more so uh, they must be delighted because they've been well criticised in the last few weeks um, it's, I'd say you know the thinking that's gone into it the talking that's gone into it who knows about the rows that have gone into it in the dressing room but they look like they've, they've turned it around now I do think we saw how Waterford got on uh, today against Clare they beat them last week they beat Tipperary today Tip haven't had a good campaign so they're building, but uh, certainly their their biggest challenges are ahead. Yeah, I spoke to Kieran Kingston there, and I asked him, you know, what what has been the difference, and did you have to sit down as a a team and management and have a few home truths and be honest with yourselves? And he said we had to be honest with ourselves, and he said that that is nearly the making of them. That maybe they came out here and had these performances because they had done that, and. You know, he said a lot of people were writing them off. Oh, certainly. And I can tell you about a lot of experiences in my own career with Tipperary when the worst performance, you know, is at the very bottom and you just start climbing after that. Um, because a lot of things can be hidden. A lot of things aren't said. Uh, uncomfortable truths don't come out until it really gets to the stage where there's nothing else. And I think probably Cork hit that um, over the last few weeks. And you could see it in the Waterford game. There was a lot more rawness, a lot more hunger to, to, to get around the opposition and like you can talk about all the tactics you want now it has to be set up in a certain manner or way but if you don't have players that are willing to just forget about their own game how much they've scored or how much ball they're on and just defend and set play up and tackle and hook and chase the last cause because I wouldn't associate it over the, last, over the first few matches in Munster with Cork chasing lost causes or doing the, the work that you don't, nobody wants to do because it probably won't be in a stat sheet but I wouldn't have associated with him but in the last two games, you'd say they did. Now, um, the only problem I'd say is the first five minutes there when Tip were able from physically, they really found it tough inside their inside back line. But apart from that, they, they have to be very happy. And do you think there's more to come from this Cork team? There could be. Look, at the, mentally, I think is one of the big things now that they that they say keep grounded. Keep low, there'll be a lot of talk. We saw, actually, you were going down doing interviews and I said that they had to clear Cork people off the pitch. So there'll be a lot of slaps on the back after this, you know, and that's that's probably the most dangerous thing. So they have to keep on top of that. I think what they've done excellently is Jice playing centre-back for me is a, a game changer. He's hard-edged. He seems to know when there's a danger in the full back line and gets gets back and uses the ball well. Um, and Mark Coleman had a really good game, his best game for a while now, uh, playing on the wing. And the two of them are dominating. And apart from that, you know, I think Downey is doing his job in the full back line. I think they were the things that people would have been concerned about. Fitzgibbon back to form, we I probably didn't see him playing as well since last year. You know, and it's fair to say that maybe the semi-final last year is the last time he played as well. So they they must be happy, but you know, I think proceed with caution uh, until until they get a, a real test.
And a big positive for them as well is the, the lads coming off the bench. You know, they made an impact. That's what you need. We've seen the likes of Tim O'Mahony, what a goal he scored. You know, that's exciting and that's what you need to push on to be a successful team. Well, it is. And I know it's a change of position. He's played there before, but he probably, you know, also nominated last year wing back. And things change, and I suppose that's the truth that Kieran Kingston is talking about. That uh, nobody will get their, their their place based on what they've done before. So Jack O'Connor come in, score two or three points, I think, um, and that's what they need. They certainly need that because you know you have Pat Horgan comes off now. All of a sudden, he's wondering is is he going to be at the level to start? So it shoves things on in training. And, and I I firmly believe if there's too much comfort in a team, you're going nowhere. The, there's a soft ed, uh, softness comes in. So there's a hard edge there now. They know it works. Uh, they know they're not all guaranteed their place. And I would say they realise if they're not working hard enough in the field, the Cork selectors and management have no choice now but to call uh, people ashore quickly and make the hard changes. So they've shown it. Um, I, I do think they can push on, but it's they, they still have to make, you know, you still, you still can't trust it 100% yet. They really have to maybe meet one of these big teams. If they get past Joe McDonough winner, meet one of these big teams and make a real claim. And that's it. They go on to the Joe McDonough now, the, the winners of that, which is Antrim or Kerry. Who do you fancy will come out of that? I think Kerry over the last few years have been very, very consistent. Oh, so do Antrim, but it, it, they usually have pretty tight games. Um, I wouldn't say for... I, I think I think Kerry, um, I'd, I'd like to see them win it, just just for terms of a monster team. And the only thing is Tipperary might have to play them then in, in a relegation battle after that. But uh, they're on a roll at the minute. Um, they'll be full of confidence. So, you know, Kerry, Kerry have a good chance. Of, but, it, it, you know, Joe McDonough matches are so exciting. They're all so close that it's really hard to, hard to call it. And just to look to tip for a minute or two, Jason Ford, he, he was really good today. You know, they did have positives out there. It was very difficult for them, especially in that second half. It got a bit dead. It got a bit like a training game at times. Yeah, you know, you know that's never easy to watch. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, th- I think I said the first few minutes, I'm pretty excited up in the entry, you know, losing the bias. But um, they looked to have a good style. They were putting good ball into Kyo. Like the, he got one good ball early on and skinned his man through for a goal. Um, Jason Ford I thought tried hard but, but played well throughout um, won a lot of ball and you know Jason was criticised early in, earlier in the year but he's, he's a quality player I think he got five points from playing Norm McGrath you know obviously tried very hard and scored all his frees amazing free taker um, given that he doesn't even take him for his club most of the time so what, what a man he, he is at times but yeah I, I think Rowan and Maher as well played his heart out back there but do you know I, I looked at a lot of him and he said well you know, it's not like anybody was terrible bad individually, but as a collective, defending collective. No, not together. So there was no, you didn't see them being able to hunt Cork in, in, in packs. Like in Hurland, that's a given now. It has to be done. Yeah. They can't do it around the middle of the field. The other team can't get time to look no. up, pick ball wherever they want. Men were running free that we saw from, from up high. And it just was quite disorganised with the ball and without the ball. It just looks like we're a little bit off in exactly what we need to do and what we want to do. Um, and very evident, as I said, around the middle, we're passing the ball at times for the sake of passing it. Sharp puck outs, but not actually moving it onto the right area afterwards. Movement slow on puck outs. So, um, it, it, you know, there's, all, there's not too many pluses after that. And it's probably very hurtful, you know, for Tipperary supporters. Um, against one of their arch rivals who you know Cork aren't even flying that high and, and suffered a, a, a big a big beating today now by 12 points so sober and enough day I'd say for Tipperary and probably 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 a big big look to be had at it uh, as the next few weeks go on and you know they may, they may have as you said we said it might have a, a relegation battle yet so uh, interesting few weeks ahead really and some of those things you're describing that it's just not fully working for them like they're just that bit slow to give the ball and all of those things is that not something that comes with time is it is it not a process like we do have a lot of lads out there who made their championship debut this year is there positives for tip to take away from this championship to to look to look we we let these lads get a bit of championship time and now next year you know they, they're more aware that they'll be more together as a team all of these things you know is that more of a positive I, I definitely agree with you there and a big positive as you said if you're talking about positives or the championship they're the players of the future for Tipperary like you're not magically going to pull guys from, from club level like these are lads that won under 21 All-Irelands under 20 All-Irelands minor All-Irelands so there is there's a certain degree of pedigree there mm. but uh it isn't there yet, you know, you, but you need time. Like th- those Cork players we saw going so well today, the Robbie O'Flynn's of this world, Tim O'Mahony coming on, Coleman, uh, Fitzgibbon, 
they, they were all playing against these Tipperary players underage and wasn't a lot between them at times. So, But they've had experience over the last three years. They, they've been blooded a lot sooner. So they have that and they have the conditioning of playing inter-county hurling as well. So there's a huge amount of experience and conditioning that's gone into the Cork players that the Tip guys don't have yet. And you just you can't buy that and you can't get it overnight. So um, as you said, and we said, it's, it's experience, but to use the experience, learn from it, get better and improve next year. There's no point in tip people talking about winning a Munster final next year, winning All Ireland. Great if it comes, but it's about improving, upping your level a little bit uh, and a little bit more uh, over the next couple of years. And you know, I think it could take a couple of years before uh, competing with the top teams again. And the hurling championship as a whole, have you enjoyed it so far? Yeah, do, do you know what? It's it's very enjoyable. I t- think when the the round robin came in first, I was a little bit. I was a little bit off about it because I love that whole knockout mentality and you know all the day and, and full stadiums because they might only get a couple of chances to see their team but do you know what it is brilliant um, and in fairness over the last few years you'd be worried you might have a, a couple of dead rubbers and it doesn't seem to be it seems like like the premiership today yeah, last day of the season call can't call it who's going to win who's going to get through who'd have thought Waterford would mm-hmm. be in that situation today at the end of the you know two months ago mm-hmm. you'd have said God, Waterford, okay. yeah, that they'll be second at least in Munster yeah. to get through, uh, and there they are. So, and and the volume of matches changes as well. It just you need so much endurance, you need luck with injuries, you need great physios, you need the whole whole thing. So it's a whole new, it's still a whole new structure really, um, because it was interrupted by COVID as well, and so managers and players are still getting used to it. It's it's tough. So we were talking earlier, like the, probably what is there four games in five or six weeks, at in at at championship level. That's really, really hard. That's exactly it's, it's so much different to league, harder ground, the the amount of ground you're covering, uh, the intensity in the field. It's so different that, um, yeah, it's it's so enjoyable and it's great. We've we've another few matches left to go. And for you watching on here in Semple Stadium, how do you find that aspect? Obviously, you're a few years uh, retired, but do you still find it hard sometimes? You'd love to be out there. Yeah, look, you would. Look, I'd, I definitely today. You'd love to help the team, you know. Um, you'd love to be in that position, but uh, unfortunately, the body obviously tells you when time is up. But yeah, look, it's 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 tough watching. But look, I'm as big a supporter as that. And and look, ex players, you'd have to be critical uh, of the team. And I think you're just trying to do your job and be honest, but. Um, you still love to see him do well, you know, and that's the whole thing. You'd be disappointed with certain aspects, but at the end of the day, I often spend time out in this stadium or out in this pitch and getting well bet, and it's a tough place to be. So, as much as people are frustrated, I think you have to realise the players will feel it more than anybody else. And are you playing any club hurling? Uh, trying to do a bit now. <laughs> we don't know for how much longer the body will stay going. So, look at every day you can go out and train and play for your club. I think is you know I think that's the, at the most basic. That's that's a great thing uh, to be involved in a GA and meeting your friends three times a week. I don't think you won't get away with that when you're finished hurling. So I think play, yeah. And and I'll tell you one thing. I've never heard anybody say they're delighted to be retired from playing sports. So you just play as much as you can and enjoy it.